you have time. You have the knowledge and the willpower and the discipline to get it done. Your heart, your life, your happiness is your responsibility and your responsibility alone. One day you're gonna realize your life is yours and there's a lot of people important to you that surround it, but ultimately it's yours. Then you must decide where you want to invest this life invest in something worthwhile. You have to picture yourself there. Wherever it is, you've got to picture yourself there. All right, the next step is you've got to believe it. I'm here to tell you as a former professional athlete, all we talked about was the next level, and most people think the next level is a cliche. The next level is not a cliche. The next level is a lifestyle. The next level is a tangible place. In three years, I doubled my NBA income in the marketplace. That's what I call the next level. See, I firmly believe that making money is easy. I've been in business 15 years. Every year, my salary and income gets bigger, stronger, and faster. Why? Because I understand the keys to that proverbial next level. You are in charge of your next level. You cannot expect to get promoted to that next level if you are mediocre. Some of you guys are doing a five million, you wanna to get to the next level, it's gonna require you to become somebody different. If you're at 10 million, you wanna to get to 20 million, you can, but you must become someone different. Seventy-six percent of Americans live paycheck to paycheck. Sixty-four percent of Americans that have businesses break even or lose money. Mo most people are, don't have any money and have accepted the fact that they don't have any money. They don't have any leftover money. They're fearful of money constantly. They overspend. They don't know how to produce money. They definitely don't know how to multiply it. The, the land of the brave and the home of the free, it, it's not even close to the truth. It's just important for people to understand that complaining has no value. And if you complain about not having enough money, work more. If you complain about not having work-life balance, spend more time on vacationing in your family. It's super simple. Let your actions dictate instead of sitting there and feeling like you're not in control. Poor people say, I can't afford it, I can't do that, I don't have time. It's an escape. You know what I mean? It's easy to say I can't afford it. Oh, I'm too tired. Oh, I can't go to the gym. You know, when you, when you could go to the gym, but no, I can't. Truth is, I'm just too lazy to go to the gym. Money doesn't have value, right? And this is an important thing that most people don't immediately understand, is that money itself doesn't have value. Money is, is a vector for transmitting value. It's how you express value. But the value isn't in the money. It's in the product or service you bought with it and it's in the labor you gave in order to acquire it in the first place. That's where the value comes from. There's nothing intrinsically valuable in the money. You shouldn't put money in a house, you should put money in your brand. You should put money in the marketing. You should promote yourself, not put money in where you and the kids live. Right, why is that a mistake? Because it's dead money. I mean, it's, it, it, it can't, a house can't make you money. A house does not make you money. The only reason people think a house makes them money is they're comparing it to if I rent, that costs me money. But, you know, if you need to go to a hospital, you don't buy the hospital. You rent a bit. To get out of there as fast as you can. If you go on a trip, you go to America and you want to go to Disneyland, you don't buy the hotel. You rent a room. And nobody thinks bad, poorly of that. They're like, yeah, I'm going to go there, use the place and get out. That's what you should be doing with your living. Find a place where you can rent. Pay rent monthly. Don't own the house. And take all the money that you would have put in that house purchase, down payment, Use all that money to improve your business and yourself so that you can get more money. So I see so many people here like, I'm gonna invest 300,000 pounds in a house to hopefully make $30,000. Right. I'm, I'm gonna buy it for 300, I'll, maybe I'll sell it for 600,000. I'll double my money. Fixed in one place, by the way, where no money comes to you. Money does not go to homes. Right, and that's been a big thing on your career is moving locations because people who stay in the same place get too comfortable. If you study wealthy people, they're mercurial. They're moving, they're mobile. Warren Buffett and Bill Gates do not talk about the home they live in. They talk about the places they're going to. They go meet money, they go meet wealth, they go meet connections. 
People are stunningly accepting of anything if they actually believe that's the purest form of it. I think I'd be less acceptable if I hedged. I really do. People will accept you. People accept everything. Just be you. Be you and clearly people like react. When you're trying to fake something and you've got bad intent, well then that's visceral and we hate. But I actually think we, we, we don't give love to the person that actually knows they have it and they're trying to fake it to conform. Hence why I won't adjust to this market all the way because I don't think I'll be respected. I know what my intent is. So why would I be scared? I want to build the biggest building in town. That's who I am. And you know how I want to do that? By building the biggest building in town. And a lot of people want to build the biggest building in town. And you know how they want to do it? By tearing everybody else's building down. Poverty is passed on. It's taught in your families. And middle class is taught in families. And so the people right now who are sitting at home <clears throat> who are struggling financially or worried about money or unhappy, they may be making a lot of money, but unhappy with what they're doing, it was probably taught to you. You know, your super ego was taught, get a job, work hard, or you'll, or you'll never be rich, or the rich are evil, or whatever. And until you change your mindset, Correct. money won't help you, right? Correct. And we see that with people that win the lottery, people that make more money, they still have the same problem. Right. Because they have that poor man's soul. Right. If you're poor, you'll always be poor. That's really hard for people to understand. Yeah, the money will disappear that fast. Just like most pro athletes, you know, they make millions of dollars and what, 65% are bankrupt five years later? It's because they come from poor families. Now you tell them that, they get very angry at you. It's not, it's a rich fault. You know, it's you guys ripped me off and government ripped me off. But unfortunately, what Mr. Lipton was saying, it's passed down genetically. That's the frightening thing. And it's interesting when you commit to something, little gifts just start automatically showing up. It's a phenomenal thing. It's happened my whole career. When I fully commit, somebody will bring me something. Okay. And then look, then keep your eyes open. And by the way, the package may come wrapped in a package you weren't thinking about. Hard work. Or like a voice or like a person or, a, 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 you know, maybe from a different direction than you thought or an offering where you're like, you read something about this and that's not the thing. Like all throughout my career, it's come in weird kind of ways. If you ask for help and, and, and somebody shows up at the door, may, maybe let, invite them in, okay. regardless of what the packaging is or what you've heard about it or whatever. That's really been beneficial to me. Okay. How old are you? 44. Think of, I'm 40. Do you know how young we feel? It's, when you yeah. were 26, did you ever think that this is what 44 felt like? No. You but, thought that that was finished? Yeah. How old are you? 13, 13. Like, you think a 40 year old, like, when I was 25 years old, I thought a 40 year old was finished. I don't even feel like I'm starting. Right? Yeah, but when I was 26, I was in a rush. I understand. And all of those guys and girls on the streets last night, they, when you say that to them, like their face kind of goes blank because all the stuff they watch, MTV, music videos, this, it's all about the bling now and the this now and the this now. You know, and, and MTV is tame. You start following people on Instagram and it's a disaster. They're all pushing like, you know, it's all about champagne and private planes and you can get it too and just sign up for my course. Like, and everybody's falling for it. So I'm coming out and I, first of all, I want to be historically correct. Nobody in 100 years is going to watch that video and say that I was full of crap. I like that, right? Number two, I, I want my legend to grow. I'm always fascinated by politicians and world figures. Like Winston Churchill, his brain continues to grow, yeah. right? I want that. When I'm dead, I want to be in the ground at peace knowing my legend's growing. Like I want that. I want that in the business world. And so I'm giving real advice and real advice looks like this. When you're 19 and you can spend seven full years learning your craft, meeting people that are mentors, being patient, and you wake up and you're 26 years old, you have your entire life in front of you and you've done great foundational work to go on and then be successful.
you know, I have bad luck too. I've, I've, I've had f financial crashes. I've had people stab me in the back, but they're all good because I grow from it. That's spirituality. Right. You know, people who are afraid of making mistakes like they teach in school, they don't ever grow because spirituality is there's good and there's bad. There's right and there's wrong. There's up and there's down. Most people only want to be right. They only want to be positive. Well, you can't have that. That's not reality. And the average person, the reason they're poor is they haven't failed. You know, they play it so safe. They haven't made any mistakes like they taught in school. That means they don't learn anything. That's why the school system's actually fundamentally corrupt. It's anti-education. Right. Don't make mistakes and don't ask for help. And if I didn't ask for help, you know, I have my accountants, my attorneys, my bankers and all that. You know, I go into business like a rugby team. You know, boom, boom, and we kick butt. But the average guy is standing there, oh, I'm an A student, I'm, gonna, I'm going to do this all on myself, and a, and a bunch of rugby players run you over, and you go, well, they're not playing fair. Yeah, well, you're, not, you're playing stupid. You should have a team. You should have accountants, attorneys, and bankers, and all that stuff. But that's not the game I want to play. I said, then don't play the game. You know, the, the game of business is played with accountants, attorneys, bankers, I hate to say it, politicians, you know, you gotta know the game. Like, I don't wanna hustle. I wanna, I wanna prosper. I don't wanna grind. I wanna create a machine that monetizes. You know, I'm not shameful of money. I want money. I want a lot of money. I wanna give money away. I wanna raise a lot of money. And you can't do that if you're broke. Most of the people watching this thing should either not be in business if they've got one or close the f***er down if they got one. Because you got in business for all the wrong reasons and you don't have the balls to close them down because of what other people are going to say. You, don't ha you have no idea how um, limitless it is when you're not afraid of what other people think or say. You have no idea. There's not two people watching this thing that even has uh, a concept of what it is to act as if you have no limits to your abilities. Zero. Uh, but you have to do something every day that scares you, scares you. And, um, and that's uh, a, a takeoff from Helen Keller, who said, or not said, uh, she was deaf, dumb, uh, everything, she couldn't do anything. And she said every day she did something to scare herself. Well, if you and I had all those afflictions, just getting out of bed would be scary enough. And so I decided that one of the differentiations between the people that got the most out of the, uh, the week-long seminar and the year-long free mentoring from me is people that really press themselves hard. So I translated that into they've got to do something and list it, what they did to scare themselves every single day. Is that the essence of really what you do, is getting people to take more risk, or to get out of their comfort zones, and then the wealth comes later? It's not just uh, out of their comfort zones. It's the change of reality. Okay, you know, your reality is different than my reality. And, you know, your followers' realities are all different. Uh, it, but it's the change of reality. And to make yourself uh, accountable, that's not just getting outside your comfort zone, making yourself accountable. Okay, uh, not just accountable, to, not accountable to somebody else, accountable to you, me, you know, yourself. Because that's the ultimate, uh, ultimately, that's the only person you should be accountable to, is yourself. And we grow up, uh, in my judgment, wrongly, that, the, that, that we don't hold ourselves accountable enough. We just don't. We, we, we've learned uh, to come up with reasons why we can't do this, reasons why it's okay not to do this, reasons why you didn't follow up on time, reasons why I told the guy to get back to him by Wednesday, it's now Friday, oh, it's the weekend, I'll now get back to him to, uh, you know, on Monday. And uh, life has gotten simpler now. With the internet and with email and the things where the communication is almost instant, you think it should be easier, but it's not. I, I use the analogy, 25, 30 years ago, you go in and buy a $100 million company, your due diligence would be three, four, five weeks, and it'd take you three, four, five weeks to close the deal. Okay, a month and a half, six to eight weeks. With the internet, it should take less time because the information is instantaneous. 
It takes us twice as long to close a deal now. Twice as long. There's no reason for that. Things haven't gotten twice as complicated, but somebody has to put their name on the line. Somebody wants to push off the accountability. Somebody would rather have Brian sign off on it. So I go home early on a Thursday, knowing you're gonna come in early on a Monday and your signature will be on the document instead of mine because I don't wanna be accountable. Uh, and so the, the kids today have this need it's, it's like this thirst for, for guidance. And the kids do better in the year-long mentor program than the older kids. So the kids in their tw teens and 20s uh, do better than the guys in their 40s and 50s. That's because the guys in their 40s and 50s got a lot of baggage. Bad habits. Bad habits, you know, and it's tough to get rid of them. And the, um, you know, motivation gets you started. Good habits keep you going. Most people just have piss poor habits. And, you know, I've had these same habits for about 50 years now, okay, about 50 years. And I don't even think about it. I mean, it's just like brushing my teeth, taking a shower. I just do it. And, uh, and, I, and in one of the other interviews that uh, I did with you, I said, when I do feel wimpish, which isn't too often, I just say, come on. And, and I just go out and do it. Uh, and, 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 and I do that about my entire life. Uh, everything about it. And, and, and I know that if I hadn't built up these habits 20, 30 years ago, you know, at, at age 70, I certainly wouldn't be doing this. I don't fail very often. I, I do fail. You're pretty open about all the failures. Of yeah, I'm not ashamed them. of them. Right. That's, who, that's what's made me who I am. You said failure is just testing. Correct, it's just testing. And I don't know, and I'm quick to pull the trigger two, two ways. I'm quick to pull the trigger and trying something, and I'm quick to pull the trigger and closing something. Just turn the key. What does that mean, turn the key? Turn the key means close the fucking business. Most of the people watching this thing should either not be in business if they've got one, or close the fucker down if they got one. Because you got in business for all the wrong reasons, and you don't have the balls to close them down because of what other people are going to say. You, don't ha you have no idea how um, limitless it is when you're not afraid of what other people think or say. You have no idea. There's not two people watching this thing that even has uh, a concept of what it is to act as if you have no limits to your abilities. Zero. lack of self-esteem, uh, lack of self-worth. Now they think they have self-worth. They think because they've made a few bucks. But in actuality, and when they measure it against the other 8, 10, 12 people sitting around the table, they realize, or they start to question, hell, maybe I was just lucky. Now all of us, when you're only a one-trick guy or gal, think, was I lucky? Now I've done it so many times, I know I'm, I wasn't lucky. I might have been lucky the first time, but I'm not, I haven't been lucky the 15, 20, 40, 50, 60, I know that. Okay. But maybe I was lucky the first time. The, but my life changed when I went, I was pretty much a, a haphazard kid, got in a lot of trouble, got arrested four or five times, thrown in jail, and this is when my dad's a cop. But then I went, I volunteered for the draft um, in 1966, at the height of the Vietnam War, and um, I went to OCS, and that changed my life, because it was the really first real high performance thing that I could measure myself against other, with other people. Two thirds of all Fortune 500 uh, CEOs have one thing in common, military background. Really? Two thirds of those two thirds have something else, martial arts. What do you learn in martial arts, Brian? Discipline, focus. A lot of people don't believe they deserve to be there. I convince them and uh, we have these drills, why you belong there. A lot of people that come there, you know, with money, that have made money, think they made it by accident. Right. I just had one of my superstars who's made a hundred million bucks tell me in the last week, you know, I'm not sure I'm gonna have another lucky accident. And I said, you did it. I mean, 
you, you know, you tried a lot of things. I believe Thomas Edison. I would I wouldn't have done it ten thousand times. Okay. I would have hired an engineer from MIT to do it. <laughs> but I mean, uh, I've tried a lot of things. Nobody's failed at more things than I have. And the first hundred million are successes. But I could write a book about failures that'd be, I mean, because I've tried a lot of different things. Because failure is just testing. And uh, one of the reasons I've been so successful in generating this equity and value in my kids, and I call you all kids, is because I convince them that making a mistake is okay. Your parents probably told you, you can be anything you want, but you can't. That's horse. <laughs> you can't. If it's all juxtaposed. So, but what you tell them is that you can do anything you want that you have passion for. Because that eliminates most of the crap. Because most people don't follow their dream. You know, like they say in the sound of music, you can't have a dream come true unless you have a dream. Now, I still dream. I dream in Technicolor. I say my affirmations and goals every single night. It's bloody hard to be a high performance person. What is your methodology on leadership? What is your methodology? On culture what is your methodology on sales what is your methodology on teamwork we can go to a Super Bowl party and we missed a real lesson you can be down 28 to 3 but if you have a methodology your teammates won't panic if you have a methodology your teammates won't quit when you have a methodology whether you're winning or losing, regardless of the score, if you got a methodology, it's the only way that you can win. He's in! Patriots win the Super Bowl! Your next level is attainable. Your next level is a tangible place. Your next level is up to you, but your next level is about you creating, adopting, or learning methodologies for everything. Now, can I be honest with you? Divorce in America is about 50%. The only thing that happens in relationships, we date. We go to movies, we put on cologne and perfume, we actually comb our hair, we open up the door. We got one methodology to get her. We got one methodology to get him. And then we get married. And what happens? We change our methodology. Ladies and gentlemen, I've been married 23 years and men, I want you to hear me closely. I have methodology and here's my philosophy. It's cheaper to keep her. So as a result, I try my best to behave the exact same way I behaved when we dated, as I do 23 years later. Try it. I promise you, it'll work. All right, lesson number one, lesson number one, lesson number one. If you want to be successful in business, lesson number one, cut off the news. The media's job is not to tell us the truth. The media's job is to make money. The media has figured out that America is addicted to negative information. So every night at six, when you cut off the news, do you ever turn to your wife, husband, significant other and say, honey, I feel real good about America. When's the last time you said that? When you cut off the news, you're angry, you're sad, you're frustrated. Some people are actually scared. I kick my competitions, but because I don't watch the news. One methodology I want to teach you today is what I use to close deals. And I almost never hear the word no. See, my marketing methodology is called the mousetrap. My job is to simply catch mice. In this context, mice are meeting planners, people who plan meetings. So in order to build a good mousetrap, you got to figure out some good cheese. You got to build a good mousetrap, which begins with cheese. Here's my cheese. 
Every meeting panel wants a speaker who's entertaining and dynamic and gives the audience great information. That's my cheese. So all my marketing materials, because I'm very entertaining and dynamic. And I give great information. But once you got somebody nibbling on your cheese, I come in with the clothes and it's fast, it's strong, and it's swift. Because every meeting planner wants an entertaining and dynamic speaker who gives great information. That's what they're looking for, and I know it. So can I ask you a question? What are your customers looking for? Don't think like you, think like a customer. See, your closing mechanism always needs to be connected to a promise. People buy promises. I got a coaching program and I teach all my business leaders all my methodologies and I just gave you one for free. Kind, I didn't go too deep, as deep as I could go. Can you do me a favor? Go back and build a mousetrap. Make sure you got some good cheese. But what is your closing mechanism? Everyone loves a promise. I'll be the best motivational speaker your group's ever had. You guys know I almost never hear the word no. I'll be the best speaker your group's ever had. It's really hard to say no to that, would you agree? One of the best ways you can build a marketing methodology is stop thinking like you and start thinking like your customers. What has made me a multimillionaire, I'm gonna to reveal to you right now and I can prove it to you. The superstars that you're looking for are on the tip of my tongue. Well, what did we think? Did we like them? The likability factor is the best kept secret in business. Hire for attitude, train for skill. Hire for attitude, train for skill. Hire for attitude, train for skill. The superstars you are looking for in any service-based industry are likable people, and I can prove it to you. Have you ever wondered why and how Oprah became a billionaire? Oprah convinced 30 million women and about a million men that she was their best friend. And every afternoon, those 31 million people would tune in to their best friend. Oprah converted the likability factor into money. Is everybody with me? If you don't have a methodology, you're gonna have rebellious people spark every now and then, am I right or wrong? If you don't have a methodology, you're going to have people go off the reservation every now and then, am I right or wrong? So if you don't have a methodology and you got people doing dumb stuff, that's not their fault, that's your fault. Did we like them? If the answer was uh, what'd that really mean? Next. Have you guys ever paid attention to the greatest salesman on this earth? See, I pay attention. They call me a thought leader, so I'm always thinking. The greatest salesmen on this earth are not business people. They're a bunch of girls four feet tall. Who am I talking about? The Girl Scouts, man. You will bounce a check before you turn a Girl Scout away. You will buy more cookies, even if you got cookies in the house. Am I right or wrong? And let's be honest, those cookies aren't that freaking good. Those little girls are sales assassins. It's hard to say no to a Girl Scout. It's like emotional. And here's why. We've all heard the term before, but we don't execute it. People want to buy from people they know, people they like, people they trust. Have you heard that before? But yet, do you execute that methodology? We know Girl Scouts. We like Girl Scouts. And we trust Girl Scouts. It's hard to say no when you have the trifecta. If you're ready to go to that next level and install methodology, say, aha. Uh -huh.